Hello guys, this is Rido and today we're going to take another look at some Warcry cards. Um, this time we'll look at both the Caradron Overlords and the Fire Slayers and see which dwarf is the better dwarf. So let's start off with the Caradron Overlords. Um, they are an interesting one because they are one of the very few warbands in Warcry that are mostly ranged focused, which always is quite interesting. So, don't expect too high damage outputs in general, because as we've seen in the past, um, ranged fighters do a lot, a lot less damage, and in my statistics it's very hard to represent the value ranged adds on top of um, just the damage it does. So, yeah, let's have a closer look. So looking at the Arcanaut company, the just the box and Arcanaut with the pistol and the pick, I think it is. Um, his damage per activation is only 1.4, which is incredibly low, which gets his damage per, per point value also to be pretty low. Um, he only needs two activations to be killed. However, being as cheap as he is, that actually makes him the best points per survivability in out of all of these models, so if you're just good, going to look to be durable, he's actually quite good. Um, next up is the Argonaut leader. He's doing only a tiny bit more damage than the normal Argonaut at two points per activation. Um, being more costly than the Argonaut, though, that makes him a pitiful 0.01 damage per point value and yeah that in my eyes just makes him useless entirely um, then we've got something very surprising and very nice is the Arcanaut Gatling gun um, this Arcanaut company guy he has six attacks which is a lot for ranged attacks and he will dish out an average of 4.1 damage which is really really nice and at his low point cost that actually gets him up to the green level 0 0.04 damage per point value which is i think the first time i've seen that on a ranged weapon so yeah very good very very good obviously he's also only toughened three and eight wounds i think so he goes down relatively quickly um but again, since his points aren't that high, that's still um, in the medium range of things. So, yeah, I definitely bring um, a couple of these guys. And we've got the Arcanaut with Harpoon, is what I called him. That's also like a gun. It does three points of damage, which still isn't bad at all. And in the medium range of damage, still nice. But just not as good as the Gatling gun, so... I don't know why you'd want to bring him, really. Then, something that's incredibly interesting to me is the Arcanaut with Pike, and that's the melee version. So, um, yeah, that's the Arcanaut melee guy with the uh, with the actual Pike. And as you can see, he deals a whooping 4.5 points of damage in a single attack. Um, and at his very low point cost, that actually puts him up to 0 0.06 damage per point value, which is amongst the highest there are in all warbands. So, interestingly, in this very ranged-focused warband, there's this one guy who does incredibly well in terms of melee damage. Again, his survivability isn't great, but since you do have the 2-inch range on his pike, you can keep away from enemies and only be attacked once, uh, ideally, so he might stick around for a turn at least. So honestly, having a couple of these guys is probably going to be very nice if you want to defend your gun, li gun lines and stuff. And we've got the Thunderer, the standard Thunderer with nothing special, just a normal gun. He only does 2.7 damage. I think he might cost more than a couple of the other Arcanaut of the Arcanaut companies, yet he doesn't really bring more to the table. I think all he really has is a bit of a higher defense stat, and at this pretty low damage 
and yeah, his defense also only being a little bit better than the other guys, I don't think he's worth bringing at all. Then we have the Thunderer with the, uh, it's like a flamethrower. It's one of the very few ranged weapons that don't have a minimum range on this warband. And dealing 5 points of damage is actually pretty nice. Um, putting him also in the green range of damage, which is also, as I said, very, very uncommon. So, yeah, that's that's a nice one. You can totally bring him. And we've got the Thunder with the Duckfoot gun. He does 4.2 damage on average, which is a bit lower and puts him on the medium kind of range damage. So still not bad, but looking at your other options I don't see that you really need him. Then we've got the Thunderer with the grenade launcher. Um, yeah, six points of damage on range, that is very good. His points are a bit higher as well, but he still comes out to be one of the better point values for damage, so yeah, definitely take him if you want. And same goes for the one with the big gun. I call it big gun. It's It's got like a blast shield and it's a big purple gun thing. Also deals very good damage, 6.7. That's incredibly high. Costs even more points, so he comes out at this kind of same value thing here. Yeah, I like him as well. However, I think... Still, the Arcanaut with the Gatling gun might be best, just because you, because you can bring more models, and 4.1 damage still is nothing to sneeze at. Although, yeah, the 6.7 is very nice. Then we've got the Thunderer leader. Um, his damage 5.4. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's a lot better than the normal Thunderers, so I don't hate him at all. Um, but being higher points than most of the other guys, his average damage, uh, his damage per point value is going to be lower. What's nice about him is that he's more survival than the other guys. Takes four activations to kill him, which still isn't a whole lot, but at least there's something. Then we get into the engine riggers, and I really hope I haven't confused the engine riggers with the sky ones. I don't think I have, but I'm sure you'll correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, so the engine rigger, the standard one, he's 5.6 damage points per activation. And I, because I know he wields a little pistol too, but really his selling point is his melee weapon. So that's what I've looked at. And his damage is pretty good, um, especially considering that he's also moving fast and flying, which normally, like, it increases um, the points value and therefore makes damage look worse, so I think uh, this value isn't bad. Sadly, these guys aren't exactly very survivable. Being on only three wounds isn't, uh, three activations to be killed is not great. And yeah, as you can see this, because of the higher point values, this puts them down into the red bracket. So yeah, it's a difficult one. Um, again, we've got the Endron Rigger with the Gatling gun. Um, same damage as the Arcanaut with Gatling, of course, but costing just double the points. Um, you get more mobility, but you also lose on a lot of lose out on a lot of damage way when you could have brought two of the Arcanaut with Gatling guns. So his damage per point value isn't great, and his activations to be killed are also only three. So. Yeah, he's a tough call. Don't like him too much, although the uh, the Gatling gun damage is not bad at all. Then we've got the engine rigger with Harpoon. Kind of a similar story, I'm not going to uh, talk about it much more. Um, same thing for the rifle, again a bit higher damage here, 5 points of damage on one activation isn't bad. Still um, not really worth his points. So again, it's ranged and they have a lot of movement and stuff. Then you've got the engine rigger with this guy hook. His damage is pitiful. Like just looking at these statistics, you'd think there's no way in hell you'll ever bring this guy. He does have an ability which allows him to essentially teleport across the entire battlefield, which might make him worth bringing. 
but honestly these guys have good mobility anyways the engine riggers do so i don't think the skyhook is worth it then you've got the engine rigger leader um i like him i actually do he has good damage very good damage on his melee weapon um he's therefore pretty decent in terms of point value even though he's got movement and and stuff and fly and he's also one of the very few models that will take five activations to be killed so yeah i think uh, this might be the leader you want to go for we've got the sky wardens many of them are very similar to the engine riggers and i really wonder why they even put them in for example the gatling gun um it's the same gatling the engine rigger has and i think the stats are basically the same as well so yeah totally your choice which one of these you want to bring if you do want to bring any so it's it's weird anyways we've got the spy a sky one with a pike so a, a melee weapon and being a melee weapon i really don't think that 0 0.02 damage is okay i think that's too low for a melee weapon um yeah 4.5 that's the same damage the arcanaut does with the melee weapon but again you're paying so much more points i am struggling to see how this is going to be worth it then you've got this sky warden leader he's doing six points of damage which is again a lot better um but again more points obviously mean he's going to be knocked down in value on the other hand he does have five activations to be killed as well so a bit more survivable the gatling we've talked about um I think the harpoon, yeah, it's also exactly the same as on the engine rigger, so just go whichever model you have or want or whatever. And we've got this kind of drill cannon. Five points of damage aren't bad, but they aren't amazing either. You can get that out of a couple of the guys on the ground. And yeah, so you're again you're paying for mobility here. And then we've got the Sky Warden with the Sky Hook, who's also exactly the same as the engine rigger with the skyhook so that's that and i think that's all there's to be said about the carriage so in general i think the great the good models are going to be the low cost ones the arcanaut with gatling i love him he might take it for me the arcanaut with pike very good as well if you are looking to get some melee in there i like him and some of the thunderers obviously the grenade one and the flamethrower they are also quite nice so yeah all of these fighters you can definitely go for um i'd probably go for one or maybe a couple of the uh, engine riggers as well just because you want that mobility three movement is bad so going for a few faster models isn't bad taking for example the engine rigger leader he's not bad and some of the other guys aren't horrible either so yeah anyways let's have a look at the fire slayers next because we want to compare which dwarves are best and right off the right at the top we've got the auric hearth guard leader that's the ranged option um, for the fire slayers and as you can see his damage per point value is abysmal so 2.7 damage for his point value is just horrifyingly bad um four activations to be killed is okay but nothing to write a home about um the normal auric hearth guard does the same amount of damage on at range um just because he's cheaper in point that's doing him a bit more service in terms of the point value um but he only has half the wounds so he goes down twice as quickly in general i'd advise against bringing the auric hearth guard apart from one thing is that they have this double ability that lets you slow down opponents so maybe having one of them is nice just to get that like um, ability to hamper enemies movement which can be very nice i think people with net abilities are generally very good in the game so having an Auric Hearth Guard is probably a good call. 
Then we've got the Volkite with double weapons. So these are the Volkite Berserkers now. Um, he's nice. He's dealing 2.7 damage, which is the same these guys are, but in close combat, obviously. But being a lot lower in points cost, that's actually decent uh, kind of damage. And it only takes two activations to take him down, but again, since his point value is so low, that's not a, not a real issue. I think this guy you can totally go for. Then we've got the Volkite Leader, who does a lot more damage. Um, I think he's actually this very... Um, he's got the very stat line this uh, exemplary opponent I've used has, so he's 4 attack string 4 2 4. Um, just by coincidence, though. Uh, just something I noticed. Anyways, so his damage is 5.4, uh, which is enough to put him up in the medium amount of damage. Four activations to be killed, 0 0.2, 0 0.02 in terms of point value, so all across a very medium fighter. Then we've got the shield and the pick, which are the fighters I'd strongly advise against. Ooh, I, I'm only now seeing that. Got my color schemes wrong there. Sorry. Anyways, both of them deal very pitiful amounts of damage, 1.4 and 1.7. That's horrible. Um costing it actually more than the guy with double weapons. Yeah, not worth it. Not worth it at all. They they last three activations, which is a tiny bit longer, but still not very long. And um, yeah, they, they do last. They do last a bit, and for their points, that's okay, but I still I don't like them. Then we've got the Hearthguard Berserkers. And basically we've got two options, we've got the X and the Flail. Um, out of these two, the X does the better damage, as you can see, for as opposed to three uh, as to opposed to 3.6. And I think the Flail gives you one extra range, so three inch range. But I don't know that you need three inch range. Two inch range is already good because it keeps you out of most opponents' range, so why not go for the some uh, for the extra bit of damage and forget about the uh, one point of extra range and um, this does not go for the leader with flail he is actually a tiny bit better in terms of damage if you look at the uh, double activations you'll be on uh, 0.2 damage points higher so you might as well go for the hearth god leader with the uh, flail so yeah that, that's all that's to be said about the hearth, uh, about the fire slayers and overall mathematically they are not a good warband at all i think you cannot afford to have this kind of l low to medium damage output and low to medium survivability um paired with very low movement and no fly or any of the like, so yeah, I think they are going to struggle on the battlefield to be honest, and clearly to me the winner of this competition are the Caradron. Like, compare these model this. There's the Arcanaut with Pike, he de deals 4.5 damage. Uh, compared to the Volkite with double weapons, I think they are about the same kind of point cost. And the Arcanaut does double the damage. It's double the damage. Um, yeah, I I don't get it. The Volkite sucks, or, or not the Volkite in general, but the the fire slayers suck compared to the Caradron. I think the Caradron are a lot more competitive. And if you're thinking of uh, growing a beard and uh, maybe shortening your legs, I don't know, um, go for the Caradrons. <laughs> tie a balloon to your back because that's going to get you places. Um, anyways, that was me. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Please leave me any suggestions you'd like and uh, tell me what you want to see next. So uh, see you in the next one. Bye.